Hey friends, I am so glad that you're here for worship today. It is another wonderful day for us to give thanks and praise the Lord. That is exactly what 1 Thessalonians instructs us to do. In um, chapter 5, starting in verse 16, uh, this is what Paul writes. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So those are three things. Be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks. And we are focusing on that giving thanks portion uh, for the whole month of November. We are going to read from Psalm 95 so that we can be reminded of all those ways that we can give thanks to God right now. From Psalm 95, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God. He is the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. So we are going to sing our praises to God right now. We are going to extol him with music and song. Will you join me in singing?
time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. so glad that God's love will never let go, that he is always there with us. That was a fun song with a lot of jumping around, right? You might be a little bit out of breath after praising God with your body in that way. I hope that sometime during this week, you've had time to tell God thank you for all of the many gifts that he gives to you, um, whether it's things that um, are a part of God's character with his love, with his forgiveness, with his presence, with his comfort, how he's always listening to us, or if it's um, physical things that you have, like saying thank you for your food and your clothes, or telling God thank you for people in your life, like your family and your friends. But sometimes when we start to say thank you for those things, we also look around at what other people have, and we might start to feel jealous and think that we're supposed to have the same thing that someone else has. And when we don't, it doesn't always feel fair, does it? But God is a generous God, and he gives to all of us what we need. And so we are to uh, be thankful to him and not be comparing. So let's look at today's story and see how we can learn to be thankful no matter what. know you see how they've helped you with my megaphone 3000 
I can take shout outs to a whole new level. <gasps> hey, person on the side of the street. Thanks for picking up that piece of candy wrapper. Ooh, person in the purple shirt and those green shoes. You are awesome. Thanks. Hey, birds. Thanks for those positive tweets. <gasps> yep, this is probably the best gift I've ever gotten. I will cherish it forever. What? The Megaphone 4000 just came out today with 27 built-in voice modules and Bluetooth capabilities! <gasps> That's way better than this old thing. Thanks a lot, person who bought me this lame Megaphone probably got it on sale. In today's Bible story, we'll hear about some people who weren't happy with what they were given and had a real bad attitude about it. That should be fun, right? Sure, whatever. See you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. While Jesus taught in many different ways, he often shared the most important truths as stories. He used the things and animals and situations in people's everyday lives to help them understand things that were bigger. One day, Jesus explained to his closest friends what the kingdom of heaven was like, and he used a story to help it connect. Now, if he told that story to us today in our world right now, I think it would go a little something like, this. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing grape. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? $100 for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, and don't squash the grapes. Oh, what happens if we do that? They might wine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me. I'll pay you well. Good deal. Let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest, so the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. The first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one like hired us. I'll hire you, come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A great job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go. 
$100. Like totally rad, man. At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work. Huh. That means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars. And nine o'clock in the morning. One hundred dollars. Huh. Okay. By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep. $100. What? Preposterous. The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. You paid those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Friends, didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away, cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Sometimes I can be ungrateful. It's true. Like with this whole megaphone thing, I think I deserve the best. I'm fun, I'm talented, I'm generous to other people most of the time. I should get the best gifts. It doesn't seem fair that someone else out there will get a better gift than me. No. Oh. You see, I forget to be grateful, but Here's another little secret. Sometimes you can be ungrateful too. Sometimes we forget to focus on what we've been given because we're too focused on what other people have. We're too focused on what we think is fair. Don't believe me? Ask yourself these questions. Am I jealous when someone has more or better stuff than me? Or do I think I deserve better than other people because I am better than other people? Or do I count my presents at Christmas to make sure I have more than anyone else? If you would say yes to any of those questions, you might need a little gratitude adjustment. All you have to do when you're feeling ungrateful is to take a second and look around at all the things you have to be grateful for. So maybe I don't have 27 voice modules and Bluetooth capabilities, but I do have Two voice modules. It's important to be grateful. It's easy if you try. I've got the cool siren. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, things aren't always fair, but sometimes that's a good thing. Because guess what? Jesus died for our sins. That wasn't fair. And we didn't do anything to deserve that kind of sacrifice. But Jesus did it anyway to show how much he loved all people. So here's the one thing to remember today. Adjust your attitude. Be grateful for what you've got. Don't worry about the stuff you haven't got. That's a lesson for me too. Oh, sorry, that's, oh, oh. sorry. Sorry, okay, oh. see you next time. Did you know that in the Bible, it tells us over 100 times that we are to be thankful. We are to be people that give thanks and praise to God. Did you get any Halloween candy? Did you uh, get to go trick or treating or did mom and dad um, buy you some special treats to enjoy every Halloween? 
maybe um, you got a lot of M&Ms and those are like your favorite. Or maybe you got Skittles and you were like, I just want the chocolate. I don't want the fruit stuff. Um, no matter what you got, hopefully you were thankful about it. And maybe you um, traded with a brother or a sister or a friend to um, get some of those goodies that you really like. But did you find yourself maybe eyeing your brother or sister's candy bag and saying, man, they got all the Snickers and I wanted some Snickers. It's like that when we start to compare our um, life or our situation to others, we can become ungrateful and forget about what we have in our own bag or in our own life. Um, that's what was in our story today, right? The workers that worked all day were jealous of the workers that worked one hour and got the same pay. But as um, Jesus tells us in Matthew 20, this was uh, the perspective of God or the, the vineyard worker, I mean the vineyard owner. But he answered one of them, friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Ah, oh, that convicts me. We have a generous God and we are to be thankful for all that he gives to us not to look at what anybody else has and to be jealous or to say that God is not being generous or fair. So this week, when you start comparing some candy or if you go to cut a slice of cake or get a cookie, um, don't be comparing the size or what you're getting. Just say thank you. Be satisfied with what you have. Don't think about what you don't. All right, friends, I will see you next week. Take care and be grateful.